Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. You know my guests from such musicals as The King and I, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Two Gentlemen of Verona, Pacific Overtures, and of course, As the Prince from the 1997 beloved movie of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella, where he co-starred opposite Brandy, Whitney Houston, and Whoopi Goldberg. And now Disney Plus will begin streaming this beloved classic at the stroke of midnight on Friday, February 12th. Please say hello to my friend, Paolo Marcoban. Hello, everybody out there in Broadway World World. <laughs> How are you, Paolo? Paolo? How I'm, are you? And where are you? I'm in New Jersey right now. Um, uh, glorious New Jersey. Everything is legal in New Jersey. Uh, but I'm still wearing many masks and socially distancing. And I'm hoping everybody else is doing th uh, that, too, and getting your vaccines uh, when, it's your, when it's your turn and being responsible, because we're all going to get out of this together and can bring back our industry. Yes. I am doing the same thing. I am so happy. We're in New York. I'm in Hell's Kitchen. That's where I've been broadcasting from. The same thing. I still wear gloves when I go out. I double mask, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It we'll really back. is. We'll be back really, really soon. How have you been holding up during the pandemic as it progresses? Do you want to know the real answer? Or do you want to hear the PR answer, Richard? No, I want to hear the real answer. <laughs> okay. Well, the real answer is pretty good. It was actually it was actually pretty good. Um, uh, for the most part, I, you know, there, it was a balance of uh, trying out new things, failing at many of them, uh, and then actually getting pretty okay at some other things uh, that uh, you you didn't know that you had inside of you. Um, I miss my friends. I'm an extrovert. I thrive on the energy of being around people. Um, but, you know, Zoom is probably the best thing that we have for now. And I've, I've gotten really good at breathing in my friends and, and my colleagues over Zoom. So that's something to hold on to. And it's just nice knowing uh, that, that everyone is like, you know, or most of the people out there are are healthy and, and safe and, and we'll all be together again in the same room. And that's what I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to. It's so interesting because Zoom and StreamYard, this is the new now. We have to connect like heart to heart, you know, through yes. a screen, but we've learned to do this. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I, I just recently learned how to literally breathe in a person through the screen and it has changed my life. And I encourage everyone out there to try it sometime you'll actually feel like you're in the same room with your friends. If you just literally just try and breathe them in over the screen instead of just glazing over, which yeah. often happens. Oh, I love that. Breathe your friends and I love that. Well, I've just taken a deep breath for you, my friend. Um, you know, <sighs> totally. Paolo, yes. Disney Plus is uh, releasing and streaming this incredible Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella. I mean, how excited are you? Oh, Richard. Excited doesn't even begin to describe how I've been feeling this week because I didn't know myself until about a week and a half prior to the announcement. So it was, first of all, it was, it was hard keeping that secret. But second <laughs> of all, I've literally been crying tears of grace every single day, going through comments online, seeing how excited people are about this. Listen, this is become one of the most beloved, nostalgic parts of musical theater, movie, TV, movie magic from, from the 90s. And uh, it's lived on in people's hearts. I'm so proud to be a part of it. I'm so proud to share it with the new generation. I think this is the perfect time for it to come out right now. I think we all need a little bit of a lift, a little bit of, a, a little bit of love and exuberance in our lives, a little reminder that this is what our world looks like. Our world looks like a community of many different ethnicities. There are, there are so many races out there, but really we are only one race. We are the human race. Beautifully put. I have the fondest memories of watching this when it aired the first time to over 60 million viewers. Oh. I watched it with my nieces and nephews and my family. I have gone through like four copies on VHS. <laughs> that kept getting moved from house to house. We're like, wait a minute, did someone take 
the Cinderella, whose house is it at? So I can only imagine the memories you have, but um, what was it like living in the world of Rodgers and Hammerstein and this Cinderella, like being on the set? Oh, come on. First of all, I mean, let's talk about Rodgers and Hammerstein. All right. I mean, those two, that dynamic duo, because that's ex they were the dynamic duo before Batman and Robin were the dynamic. Well, maybe they, maybe they were at the same time. Maybe they came out at the same time. But those, it's a testament of how good their songs are that when it first came out with Julie Andrews and then with Leslie Ann Warren and then with the Brandy's version of it, and then with the live uh, production version with Santino and, and Laura, um, it, it's just so, it, it's so uplifting and, and the, the songs live on in your head. Pete, you just say a little lyric out of any of these songs, people start singing, singing the entire song. <laughs> so it's a real testament to that. And then being on the set, Come on, I mean, Richard, I, I'm, a, I'm a musical theater kid, right? Right. I, I, I was a musical theater kid before I was a TV or movie kid, and I'll tell you why. When I, when, uh, when I was young, when I was like three years old, my dad got the four-disc album set of Jesus Christ Superstar. So that was my first exposure to music. I wasn't even listening to the radio. I was listening to Jesus Christ Superstar. So here I am on movie set but doing the thing that i love the most my whole life and doing it with people that i have admired in the musical theater community my whole life bernadette peters victor garber jason alexander whoopi goldberg vn cox come on vn cox come on vn cox and, and not getting married today in in in, in, in <laughs> so good right yeah. um i'm so, I, i'm like bouncing off the walls i want <laughs> you to bounce. <laughs> keep bouncing and then and then to get to work with natalie desell who just came out in baps at the time and she heard like her star was rising and she's so funny and come on whitney houston <laughs> Let me just talk about Miss Miss Whitney Houston. Ah, that voice is even more glorious in person, if that's possible. Because I, I, I got to hear her sing at, at, at when we were when we were doing the pre-records at Capitol Records, and oh. just blown away. Um, and just her presence, her presence is is just so. I mean, she literally glows, literally glows. The woman doesn't have to put an ounce of her makeup on. She literally glows from inside. And then Brandy. Brandy Norwood. That's what I call her. I'll always know her as Brandy Norwood, mostly because her parents were on set most of the time. And I wanted to be really respectful to them and be like, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Norwood. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Norwood. You know? um, but Brandy, she was 18 at the time. She had uh, been nominated for. Uh, multiple Grammy awards at the time. She hadn't won it yet, but she did win. She did win a Grammy award after that. She was starring in her own TV series, Moesha. And here she was taking on the mantle of this iconic role. And I'm going to say it right now, Richard Rich. Brandy is the first black Disney princess. Totally. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Princess of the Frog. I'm so sorry, Tiana. Princess Tiana. I love your work. I love your work. But Brandy, Brandy has that place in my heart for me. And she couldn't have been the best leading lady that, you know, that I could have ever wished for. I mean, to <laughs> put a pun on the whole like making wishes. Yeah. But she was she was incredible. She was incredible to work with. I loved I loved working with her. And then Rob. Robert, Robbie Marshall, Robert, Robert Marshall, right? I mean, like our choreographer and Robert Iscove, our director, and and Neil Marin and Craig Zaden and, and, and of like and Deborah Martin Chase. Come on, everyone was a star, and and even our even our like our ensemble, incredible dancing ensemble. We had like Travis Knox and 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 uh, Tice Diario, right? And uh, um. Sergio Trujillo, I mean, like all these incredible people working on the set, you know, and our, oh, God, I, you guys just might as well go to the IMDB page. But I mean, I was literally watching the, um, the special on the Bee Gees the yeah. other night, right? And it seems like our music producer for Cinderella, Arif Martin, yeah. 
was also the music producer for the Bee Gees for, for Saturday Night Fever. And our, our director of photography, our DP, Ralph, Ralph D. Bode, was the director of photography for, for Saturday Night Fever. So, like, we basically had all of these iconic people working on the show. I mean, you know, there's Ellen Mirajnik, our... I mean, Ellen Mirajnik, she did the, the costumes for, for everything that you will remember. I mean, I, I knew her. I was, I was freaking out when we shot it because she did Face Off. Yeah. I didn't realize she did The Greatest Showman. I didn't realize she did Mal Maleficent. Come on, Ellen Mirage. <laughs> All right. No, enough I love of, this. Enough of a rant. No, I love the I love your rant. Listen, I want to go back to your audition because the prince was one of the most sought after roles for this film. And of course, what was your audition process like? Wait, I've got to go back and say Whoopi Goldberg. I can't <laughs> forget the Queen. Whoopi Goldberg. What? Are you kidding me? We're going to talk about all your all favorite right. memories of all, no. Right. We're going to talk about all your favorite memories of them in those big pinch me moments. But right. the audition, I mean, everybody yeah. wanted this role. Were you the last person in? I was the last person in. I was the last person in, and it, it wasn't intentional. I was the last person in, and this is Richard Rich. Everything happens for a reason. I'm telling you, because if I wasn't understudying a role on Broadway and called for understudy rehearsal that day, I would have been on time for my actual appointment, which was in the middle of the day. <laughs> but we were going well over with our understudy rehearsal. And I told him I had to I had to make it when I made it. And I didn't even know if I was gonna make it. Got in the car, sweaty, you know, got down there, rushed. There's like two guys in the waiting room. And then I realized that I'm the last one going in. So embarrassed. Like, this is not a good way to put your best foot forward for an audition. But the great thing is, Richard Ridge, I didn't know how important this was going to end up being or how important it would have been for any for like a an actor's career at the time. And maybe I think that's that's the big trick. Just go in and and do your work as best you can. And and, um, you know, hopefully they'll see something. <laughs> what did you sing? Do you remember what you sang? Oh yeah, yeah. I sang the uh, the two songs from the original uh, Cinderella, which was ten minutes ago, and "Do I Love You Because You're Beautiful." They didn't have sweetest sounds yet. I I don't think in mind um, to be included in the piece, or or it wasn't a part of the audition packet. And it was the um, it was the scene where he meets Cinderella for the first time. You know where they bump into each other. Um, yeah, that was the audition. That was the audition process. I mean, the great thing is Richard Rich, and I, I just, I just uh, confessed it uh, the other day to my fellow castmates, is that I had actually played the role before, so I had some history with it. But it was a really, really short stint. It was okay. So I was going to an all boys school, St. Peter's Prep, and then there was this a, one of our sister all girls school, Holy Holy Family. Uh, we were in Jersey City. They were in Bayonne, New Jersey. And uh, they needed a, a prince for, <laughs> for their production because it's an all girls school. So, so, so I auditioned for it. So I got to do that one um, too. Uh, but that was, you know, that was, that was in high school. <laughs> I was, and that was like a long time ago, you know, that was like- well, So when you found out, how did you find out you got it? And who could you tell? Like, what do you remember? All right. Uh, so it was, it was a pretty fast audition process. I went in on a Friday. They asked me to come back on Monday to read with Brandy and with the director. And so I did that. And so I got to I got to sit with the director first and then Brandy came in and, and we had our little read and they had the, you know, they had a camera on. They didn't have Zoom back then. They didn't have Skype. Yeah. So I think they taped the audition for Whitney because she wasn't in the room. Although Neil, Craig and Deborah were in the room as well as Robert is I mean, I didn't know who they were at the time. <laughs> Come on, Richard, cut me some slack. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, yeah, so that was the Monday. And then the following Friday, I, I got the call. And you know how I got the call, Richard? <laughs> back in the day, back in 1997, I don't know if you remember this, but we had things called answering services where, <laughs> where we, where, the, where you paid to, for this service where you would call in and there was a live person who 
took calls for you either from your agent or from like interested casting directors or something like that. And then you would put in your code and then you would call in and they would, they would, you know, give you the message. And, and I remember like clearly like how I'd be greeted. Hello, bells are ringing. I don't know why the operator was like stuck in 1920 or something like that, but that was her voice. <laughs> and she told me to give me my agent to call. Um, uh, Cause there was, you know, there was, there was some news and I called my agent called my agent and uh and he didn't pick up he didn't pick up because he said yeah i'll, I'll have to call you back I'm like okay okay great and then i get another phone call and it's from from somebody who i who i didn't know i said hello th- uh, this is paula she's hi uh this is so and so um from some costume department we just need to take your measurements i'm like <laughs> What are, you, what are you talking about? And so I just gave her, her measure, my measurements. I didn't know what it was for. Maybe it was for like for the king and I or something like that. Um, and then and then after that, toward the end of the day, um, my agent called and and gave me the news, and I was jumping up and down and screaming, and I had nobody to tell because I didn't have any roommates at that time. <laughs> um, yeah, what a day! What a day that was. And you know the best part of it all is that you know there there were no NDAs. We didn't. It was it was no secret. So I could I just told my friends I had to leave the show, uh, sadly. But um, but yeah, I told my cast, and I hon- I honestly didn't know what it was going to end up being. Richard Ridge. I thought it was I thought it was going to be like public access television, not even like a real cable station. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Cinderella. Uh, yeah, Rogers and Hammerstein, Cinderella. I I didn't know it was going to be on ABC. You didn't tell me. <laughs> They didn't. They didn't tell me. Um, maybe that was their version of the NDA. You know, they just didn't. I, I'm obsessed by that. You should have told your agent. I've already found out from the costume designer, <laughs> from the costume assistant, that I got this. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Yeah, but, but Richard, this is how it happens. This is that is not the first time that that's happened to me. I many times I've gotten the call from the costume department. Like you know, like when you're shooting like a TV, TV, TV uh, series or an episode or something like that. You get the costume department first because they're the first people who need to work on your stuff. Yeah, they need the most, you know, um, time to lead time on. Well, on everything, end. everything about this production was so glorious for you. It must have felt like being on like an MGM musical or something. <laughs> it's just so beautifully designed: the sets, the costumes, the lighting, and you're doing Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella with these incredible people. Let me take it to the next level, Richard Ridge. Yeah. Let me take it to the next level for you. All right? I'm going to blow your mind. Yeah. So, the sound stages where we shot on the, the where we did the 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 exterior scene slash interior scene yeah. for the palace and also for Cinderella's for Cinderella's um, uh, house. Um, the Wizard of Oz was shot there, and so. And so our incredible set designer, as an homage to that, put a little bit of gold, a little bit of gold flecks in the bricks outside the palace. Uh, you just blown on. my mind, my friend. Just so literally you're... on an MGM. I didn't even know if it was like done by MGM Wizard of Oz, but I mean that's what it yeah. felt like. I mean it was like that level of of excellence and and excellence all around. Everyone was so good at at their craft and what they do. All right, we have to talk about favorite moments i mean like pinch me moments like you said i mean you got to work with brandy i mean let's go back to, let's start with brandy i mean here you are grammy nominated star i mean the whole world changed because of cinderella the way people looked at stuff i mean this incredible beautiful diverse cast and it was so beautiful and just it just was but yet 60 million people watched it the first time around when it was run the second time around which i think was on valentine's day multi-millions of people and everybody bought this VHS and everybody who watched this around the world saw themselves as one of these characters saying, oh my gosh, Paolo's the prince. I look like him or I look like Brandy or oh my God, Whitney Houston or Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, what that means to you? I mean, just how this changed the way people view things and how it changed the course of the entertainment industry, the way this Cinderella was made. Okay, I think I think you, you you hit it right on the head, Richard. You really hit it right on the head. I mean, I I basically don't have to say anything more to that because that is exactly what Whitney Houston wanted. That was her vision, and I believe her vision has 
blown away any expectation of of what she had originally set forth. She wanted every boy and girl out there, every boy and girl out there to feel included in this story, to feel that they could take that they could they could have dreams and wishes and make something out of themselves and be empowered with that. And and um and so that's the first side of it. But the other side of it is for those of those for those people out there who don't you know align themselves with the BIPOC community because you know maybe they're Caucasian or they or they or they align themselves as as white presenting okay um they also recognize that this is what my neighbor looks like this is what my friends look like this is what the people who I love look like and why shouldn't why shouldn't our entertainment that we receive reflect the real world that we live in the real world that we actually you know are surrounded with on a daily basis but yeah it was a it was a game changer for for come on it was a game changer for for asian american young asian american men who could finally see themselves in a leading role um i've had i've had a couple of friends in the business who are doing a lot better than i am <laughs> and they said that not necessarily because of me, but because they saw someone like them on TV, singing and dancing, that they it gave them the courage to pursue this. And there's no greater gift than that. There's no greater gift than that, Richard. You know, and there's also no greater gift when you hear when when a a, a young black girl comes up to you when you're in the theater district and she says, "You are in Brandy Cinderella." Did you know that because of, of Brandy, I, I like pursued being an actress as well? And, and I was like, oh my God, this is, yeah. what a gift. What a gift to be a part of. Richard. Okay, let's talk about favorite memories or pinch me moments. Working with yeah. Brandy, favorite memory of working with her on the set. Um, all right, okay. So I don't know if it's like a favorite memory so much, but it was like, it was like a memory of, that I will always remember because it, it was just, just like sheer horror. <laughs> I was afraid of of um, dropping her. I was afraid of dropping her during the waltz because even though that dress is stunning, there's so much chenille and twill and lace on it. There's nothing to grip onto. <laughs> and anyone who knows anything about ballroom dancing is that you rely on having a good frame and and being able to grab at least being able to get grab your partner's waist or you know lower ribs um securely and i couldn't i couldn't do it and if you look closely toward the end of 10 minutes ago right before we swirl out you will see nervous sweat dripping down the side of my cheek because i was i was so scared to drop my beautiful amazing leading lady um, but as far as like favorite memories off stage, I'm I'm so glad that you asked because it's recently been coming up again. This photo was actually on a point and shoot camera that that I brought with me on set, and it's a picture of us. Uh, I guess it was the "Do I Love You Because You're Beautiful" scene. It's, we're we're sitting on this fountain together, and we're we're sharing <laughs> some McDonald's, so we're eating out of the same French fry. <laughs> And apparently, what I found out is that uh, there's a T-shirt of that out there, and I've got to, I've got to get me, I got to get me one. Oh, I want one of those T-shirts. Oh, okay, one. what? If I find it, I'm going to send it to you. All right. Now we what, have to talk about what size you. What size you wear? Medium. Okay. Thank you. Whitney Houston. I mean, just <sighs> listening to her sing. <laughs> but that's honestly. That's how I was when I was around Whitney Houston all the time. I was just like, and um, there, uh, there is a story that. Uh, it, it, all right, here's the thing: is that Whitney was like the fairy godmother in the in the piece, but and also the fairy godmother of the of of the production, essentially because she was one of the producers. But the prince, if you look closely, doesn't have a whole lot of scenes with the fairy godmother, which means that I didn't really get to see Whitney Houston all that much. However, what I did was on the days that I wasn't called, I went to the set anyway. 
and I just watched and I just wanted to be around it. And I, it was funny because like the director would be like, Paolo, what are you doing here? <laughs> You're not called, what are you doing here? Go home. And he's like, no, I, is it okay if I just like, I promise like not to get in anybody's way. I just want to watch everyone work and, and be around it all. And, and to see the, the love between Whitney and Brandy on that set is, it's like older sister, little sister, mother, daughter, like, you know, you know, they talk about chemistry. You can't, you can't act that. Right. And this, this wasn't chemistry. It went deeper than that. You know, it was, it's just, it, it was, it was an honor to, to just be able to, to be around that and, and see that. And, and Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. come on. The best thing about her is that uh, she loved her family so much. And you could see that the few times that I was around her on the set, because that's all she'd be talking about. She, all she'd be talking about is her family, you know, Bobby and Bobby Christina. And, and you, then you realize, ooh, stars, they're just like us. Right? But Whitney this. Houston is just like us. No, oh, she's not. <laughs> she's Whitney Houston. Totally. And <laughs> then there's your parents, Whoopi Goldberg and Victor Garber. I mean, yes. you spent a lot of time with them. Favorite moments of working with them. Okay, so my favorite moment with Whoopi Goldberg was the first time that I met her. Well, I mean, listen, every time I got to work with Whoopi was a favorite moment because, first of all, she's so present. And when I say she's present and grounded, she's 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 like a watcher, and I thought I think that's why she's so great on the View because she's able to watch everything and find the humor in it and find the truth in it, and she does that with people too. Yeah. And so just being around that kind of person really has a profound effect on you. But the first time that I met her, uh, we were rehearsing the Debbie Reynolds studios. She actually wasn't signed. You know it. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I know the studio. Debbie Reynolds. Oh, yes. Right. No. Um, and uh, Whoopi and Jason, I'm sorry, Whoopi and um, uh, Victor were signed on a little later than Brandy and, and Whitney. And so she came to rehearsals a little bit later in the process. She walked in through the doors. I see her. And then I, I did the only thing that I knew how to do, like from getting off of the King and I, so I, so I went down and I kneeled and I, I was like, you know, I was like, I was like, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. And you know what she did she got down on the floor too. And then she starts rolling toward me. And then I start rolling toward her. And then we meet in the middle and we're like, and we're laughing and, and we're, and we're hugging each other. And, and that was how I got to meet Whoopi Goldberg. And looking back on it, first of all, I thought I was just like, oh, that was, that was just a fun, silly, amazing moment with, with Whoopi Goldberg. But it was also a kind gesture on her part to immediately put me at ease, knowing that I probably would have been very intimidated by her. You know, beautiful, yeah, yeah, gorgeous, and gorgeous. Victor. And then Victor Garber. And then, oh, come on, listen. Victor Garber is even more handsome in real life yeah. than 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 one would expect. It's stunning, and it's stunning how sh uh, how utterly charming he is. So so much ease with his charm. It's just, it's like he was born charming out of the womb. You know what I mean? Uh, so I was like. Yeah, sign me up. I'll be that. I'll be the son of to, to that king. I want to be. I want to be a peasant in in this king's kingdom because he was so kind and gracious. And right before that, we uh, before I got this, I was obsessed with assassins. Yeah. With the assassins cast recording, I was like listening to it on replay for four years straight, five years straight maybe, and uh, and so I was very familiar with his voice. And I don't know. It, what's that? What's that saying about like never meet your heroes or right? Yeah, I, because they'll they'll never live up to your expectations or or something like that. Yeah. But they, they lived up to they they exceeded my expectations completely exceeded them. So I'm gonna tell everybody out there: if you get the chance, definitely meet your heroes. Listen, then you have Bernadette Peters, Jason yeah. Alexander, and Vianne Cox. I mean, put them, I mean, working with those three, what was that like? 
Okay, well, I've got a story for each each and every one of them. So if you, if you want the bar, you I don't know how much time we have. Say. Oh, I don't care. It's, how much time do you have? I've got I've got all the time in the world. We're in the middle oh, no. of a recovery, aren't we? We're in the middle of a recovery. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love this. Um, all right. So let's start with Vianne Cox. No. I actually so she was newish to me. So I had only known her work in in com uh, company, um, and. I was so impressed, so impressed with that. But the thing is, Vianne is like that in real life. She talks that fast and she thinks that fast. And that's why her humor is so good. Her humor is so good because that's her essence. She's she's like a mile a minute road runner, Speedy Gonzalez, every single fast thing that you can think of on the planet. And she she wraps it up in this like gorgeous, attractive ballet dancer body, you know, but she's funny she's funny and she's so sweet she's yeah. so sweet she's so sweet so that's vianne um oh and just a quick uh quick um little aside about vianne's vianne's relationship with natalie desell uh, oh. reed um i don't know if your listeners or your viewers know the story is that they auditioned together they were in the same room and they auditioned together and that and the producers are like Oh my God! This is it. These are the sisters. So I don't know if a lot of people knew that, but I don't even know if they were even doing chemistry reads with the sisters. But they just happened to be in the same, you know, same group, and then they call them in, you know, uh, together too. So I think that's just amazing. And, and rest in peace, Natalie Desell Reed. We we recently uh, yeah. lost her. She was um, brilliant too, Jeff. Brilliant. Oh my God! Not hilarious. Just, not just brilliant in this, but she's a brilliant um, uh, person who represented the the black community and also the black community for 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 women of size. You know what I mean? She, like black, it, you know, black big women are beautiful. You know, and and she really wanted everyone to love themselves. And you, and she was the prime example of someone who loved herself. And she spread that love and that joy everywhere she went. Her laugh, my God. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to who are you going to move on to? Bernadette. Bernadette. Bernadette Peters. Okay. Let's. So we didn't have social media back then, right, Richard Rich? We couldn't like keep tabs on all of our favorite no. stars. No. So the way that I kept tabs on them was going to the, the university uh, uh, library. And sitting in the recording section, uh, you know, section and listening to all the original Broadway soundtracks that I could get my hands on. Um, my first exposure to Bernadette Peters was was in The Jerk. I don't know if you you yeah. guys, yeah. You're, Steve Martin, right? with Steve Martin, right? So I didn't know that she could sing until much later on, you know, in my life. And I was obsessed with Sunday in the Park with George, so I was listening to that on repeat, and and also song and dance, um, uh, and uh, and I've got a great story about Bernadette Peters. <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> okay, so when we were on when we were rehearsing the the trying on the slipper scene at the stepmother and the stepsister's house. Right. Well, you have to rehearse the scene first so the cameraman knows where all the, the angles are going to be. And the glass slipper, the prop glass slipper, was actually not made out of glass. Sorry to pull back the curtain, but it was, it was made out of like, uh, I don't know, Lex, Lexite or something like one of those, like, you know, Lucite. 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 Yeah. That's it. Lucite. Thank you. I like Lexite um, better. I like yours. I, I think Lexite, Lexite sounds like more fabulous, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> sounds like something like William Ivy Long would have like, like invented. Like invented. Like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have some, well, I have Lucite. Well, I have Lexite. <laughs> so it was Lucite and it was a either five and a, five and a half or a six. Maybe a five and a half. It was small because it had to look nice on a velvet pillow and in Jason Alexander's hand while he was like going around the kingdom and trying it on all the girls. And it wasn't supposed to fit anyone. It was supposed to be so cartoonishly small that it wouldn't fit anyone. Even like some of the, like the young girls, like you know, yeah. the young girls who try on the shoe in, in, the, in the sequence. But here we are, we're, her we're rehearsing this, the shot, you know, and, and the, the stepsisters try it, try it on and it doesn't fit. 
And then Bernadette Peters, she, she puts it on and it fits like a glove. It fits like a glove. It's a perfect fit. Her feet, her toes aren't scrunched up or anything. I mean, I don't know how small she is because, because her presence is so huge, but in, I will attest to this. She is, she's petite. She's, yeah. she's like, right. She's one of the most petite people I know. And so therefore petite feet and apparently feet that are the perfect fit for the Cinderella shoe. And so it's, she slips right in and then she looks up and she says, it fits, it fits. And she grabs my arm and we start walking out the door. <laughs> Oh, I want this outtake. They should add this on to the DVD. I know they really should. She's the she's the cool. She's the best person in the world. So you should have married her. I know. I mean, I, I I wouldn't have said no. I would not have said no. I love it. And then of course Jason Alexander, one of the funniest guys. Oh, one of the funniest guys, and one of the one of the most hidden talent guys that I've ever worked with in my life. Did you know that he was a magician, Richard Ridge? Yes, I heard that because I did a big in depth with him, but I had to find oh. that out. I was like, "Wow!" Yeah, he he's he's not only like a little small card illusionist magician; he's an, an escape artist magician, like <laughs> Harry Houdini stuff. Yeah. Like when he was in in college, you know, out on in, on the quad, yeah. he would put himself in a straight jacket, and then uh, you know his friend would tie him upside down by a rope you know, from a tree over a bed of nails and then light the rope on fire. So he would, he would have to pull himself out of the street jacket in time. So that's one of his hidden talents. The, what, did you know that he was a martial artist? Did you know that Jason Alexander? Yeah, I did not know. Did he do did that he, on the set? Did he do that on the set of Cinderella? Well, his skill set, did he did do it. And you can see it. He does a judo roll. A, a really good judo role, actually. Yeah. It, during the prince is giving a ball, he's being uh, held up by this, um, by like an arch that some dancers are holding up, like it's like a May Maypole, Mayfair arch or something like that, and and uh, and and they lift him up, and he's about maybe four feet, his feet are maybe three or four feet off the ground, and they're going downhill on a cobblestone street. He drops to the ground. And then does a judo roll out of this out of this this move, and he did it over fifteen times, at least because they had to shoot it from you know many different angles, and he didn't hurt himself once. But yeah, he's a he's a martial artist. He's a practicing uh, JKD uh, JKD martial artist, which is uh, Jeet Kune Do. That's Bruce Lee's martial art. Come on, doesn't anybody out there want to see Jason Alexander kicking ass on? on a TV series like Cobra Kai or something like that, that would be so amazing. Yeah. I cannot wait to watch Cinderella again tomorrow night because I'm going to look for your sweat on the side over here. Please. When you're lifting <laughs> Brandy, I'm going to look for Jason Alexander doing his roles, his yes. judo roles. And I'm going to look for Bernadette, how they cut around that thing, which they must have given her a different shoe or whatever. No, she just had to act it. So like the entire time after that, she's like, oh, it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah. You know, just talk about the relevancy of this is as relevant today, this version of Cinderella, as it was the day it came out. Why do you think it's so relevant, Paolo? Uh, well, let's let's uh, let's pull out examples of other things that are currently relevant in in pop culture. Bridgerton, Hamilton. Right. Yeah. If the powers it be are looking carefully at the landscape and at how successful these productions are doing, wouldn't they want to do more of them? Yeah. And on a more meaningful level, we really, we really start to, we really need to start looking at each other like we're all part of the, are part of the same community. Um, and our production, Hamilton, Bridgerton, gives that feeling to everyone. It gives that feeling that the community is a multicultured community. And that is not just ethnicities, that's also sexual orientation. We have to love and respect each other. And that's, that's the beginning of us coming back as a country and us coming back as a world out of this recovery that we're making. I'm not yeah. even gonna call it the P word. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that recovery. No, but I, and representation I, is important. Representation is absolutely important, and and I hope that also continues, and and extends into the Broadway community as well, because that is that is really important. Beautifully put. Because I I I a big shout out again to Neil Marin, Craig Zayden, Whitney yes. Houston, the other producers on this. But like you said, Rob Isco, your director, I knew because he directed Sandy Duncan's Peter Pan. Rob Marshall, I've known mm-hmm. forever since he was a dancer. Oh, right. I mean, he danced with Cheetah Rivera in the rink. I mean, when oh my Rob- god, oh, <laughs> I knew Robbie from then. But I mean what a team they put together then. And you know, just what are you looking forward to the most of seeing Cinderella all over again? Honestly, I'm really looking forward to seeing the HD Disney plus treatment. Okay. Because I, I personally think that this is the treatment that this production deserves. I'm not saying myself, I'm not saying just the cast. I'm saying the production because it is the love, the blood, the sweat and the tears that the, that our producers put into it, that our creative team put into it. And to be able to see their work in HD glory and at any time that anyone who has Disney Plus wants to see it, that's that's all right with me. That is okay by me. Oh, I, Disney Plus is the best. They do it right. You know, yeah. my final question for you is since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, mm-hmm. every year at Broadway World, we ask performers, what is your favorite or one of your favorite Broadway love songs and why? Oh, um, <laughs> I think you asked me the same question last year when we were yeah. doing Molly Brown. Every and year I, I ask, every year we ask stars, and, who, is your favorite or one of your favorites? And, and, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you uh, the one that, that, um, that is on my lips this year. And that is love changes everything. Tell from me aspects of love. Well, if anyone, so what are the lyrics? Love, love changes everything. Hands and faces, earth and sky. Love, love changes everything. How you live and how you die. Love can make the, love can turn the world around or, or a life seem like a lifetime. Yes, love, love changes everything. Live or, glor- live or perish in its flame. Love will never, never let you be, be the same. If you think about each and every one of those lyrics, it captures a little bit, a, a little facet of what it either feels like to fall in love, to be in love, or to lose a love. And it's all right. It's all of those, all of those different stages of the love process are okay because it is not you, it's not a matter of just getting the love, it's who you become going through the process. And so that's my favorite Valentine's Day song. I love it. I listen to Michael Ball sing that all the time. Oh, God. come you on, know. Michael Ball. <laughs> well, I had Michael and Alfie on when their album went number one during the holidays. They were rehearsing, they were rehearsing Les Mis and they broke and sat with me live from London. Oh, how exciting. How exciting for you. I love it. Listen, I've got to check that out. I've got to check oh, out the yeah. clip. Oh, you do. I just listen to it all the time when I want to feel good. I just crank him on and all of a sudden it goosebumps from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Like, I don't care what's happening today. I just want to listen to Michael Ball sing Love Changes Everything. Yeah, exactly. Listen, the last time I saw you in the flesh, of course, you were doing the unsinkable Molly Brown. So beautiful. Yes. It is. I mean, that was such a glorious production that you did. Favorite memory of that before we go doing Molly Brown. <laughs> okay. So my favorite memory of that of that show is uh, Belly Up to the Bar, because there's a little bit of a history with that. So um, the first time we learned Kathleen Marshall's brilliant choreography was in Denver, which is a mile, is, you know, it's a mile up, right? And so, so you know, we were noticeably out of breath, you know, after, after learning it, doing it all the way through. What we realized was when we got down to sea level here in New York, we were still all out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it felt like an actual party. It was the first time that I actually felt like I was in a real party on stage. And I hope that everyone who got to see it, um, you know, felt that the same way that we did. And a shout out to Beth Malone, because, you know, obviously we couldn't have done it without Beth Malone and Dick Scanlon and Kathleen Marshall. 
and all of the amazing producers on it and, and the transport group. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I love how thank this has become a full you. circle moment because you work with Robbie Marshall. I, I know, my God. Robbie Marshall on Molly yes. Brown. I'm so glad that you brought that up because somebody sent me one of the art archive, you know, one of my uh, candid photos and Robbie Marshall's right there next to me. I was like, I've seen those eyes before. I'm like, oh, it's Kathleen's eyes. I I saw those eyes for like three months. See? So, yeah. Listen, I have kept you much longer than I should have. I just love catching up with you. I know. This is it's like seeing an old good friend without the cocktails. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody, please tune into this glorious, brilliant production of Rods and Hammerstein Cinderella. It is now streaming on Disney Plus. I know where I'm going to be. Paolo, stay safe, my friend. I cannot wait to see you in the flesh where I can actually hug you. I know. It might be like a 10 minute hug. Okay. So get ready for ten that. 10 minutes to go. That's another <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a 10 minute Not a mistake. Hug. Not a mistake. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Everybody, Richard. stay safe. Take care. Yeah, be well. See you at the be ball. Well.